check. Uh, hello, uh, we are joined by Mako, Kesnet, Boaster, and Knight. Uh, we have about 50 media in attendance and we'll begin with questions from the remote media. Uh, Rabia, would you like to start us off on this conference? Sure, uh, thank you so much. My question is to Knight. Um, it's it's very, it will be a quick one. FNS will be watch partying Billy Billy versus Fnatic. Do you want to give him any message? Uh, 那这个问题问到的是小K, 因为你们第一场是跟Fnatic打嘛, 然后有没有什么想说的? Fnatic打, uh, FNS. Oh, FNS. FNS is watching. Oh, FNS 也在看, 然后有没有什么话想要跟FNS说? Oh, FNS. 嗯，其实我在B站有刷到你的很多切片，我还蛮喜欢你的。我之前说的话，其实只是在赛赛场上嗯说的话，不代表我对你的不尊敬。我很尊敬你，对。呃，so uh, FNS, I just want to tell you, I saw so many clips in on Bilibili, and I just want to say, like, I respect you a lot, a lot, a lot. I please don't take that wrong way, and I really like you. I just say some trash talk on stage. 可以可以补充吗？ Okay. Uh, if you want, you can stream on Billy Billy as well. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, we'll go next to Sons of Chaos. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, my question is for Kesnit. Uh, I want to ask if it's okay to do it in Spanish. Go ahead. Yes, it is okay. I am here. Thank you. Eh, Kesnit, eh, primero que nada, muchas gracias por el tiempo. Eh, ¿Cuáles son los objetivos de Crew para el torneo, tanto en términos de rendimiento como en equipo? Adicionalmente, si tuvieras que hacer un ranking de los duelistas que hay en el torneo, ¿en qué puesto te pondrías? Eh, yo creo que tenemos como primera meta, obviamente, eh, pasar de grupos y, y como ranking de, de duelista me pongo primero siempre. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good luck in the coming matches. The question was about uh, an objective for crew, um, especially as a team. And second question would be to rank the duelists. Uh, where would Kesnet put himself? And Kesnet responded that uh, one of crew's objectives is to obviously pass groups. And in rankings, he would put himself and then Aspas and nobody else. Spank that. <laughs> All right, we'll go next to uh, Brandon at esports.gg. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'll ask this to Boaster. Um, with the Olympics going on right now, um, I'd like to ask kind of your thoughts on on regional pride in Valorant. You know, are you, are you playing for your team? You know, do you have a sense of playing for, you know, EMEA? And, you know, which uh, country do you think would perform best in, in a sort of Valorant Olympics? Okay, so if there is a, a Valorant Olympics, well, I think it's safe to say UK is not going to be doing very well there. <laughs> uh, no, maybe we do okay. We, we, we'd be believing, that's for sure. Um, uh, I think the obvious one is Turkey, uh, South Korea. Like those ones, I've already got teams that are performing pretty well as a core five-man roster. Um, but yeah, as for this event, if I'm playing for EMEA or anything, not really. I'm just I'm just here to play the game and uh, have fun at champ. So let's 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 get it. Thank you. We'll go next to OnePlus. 네, 이, 이 질문은 마코 선수에게 하고 싶습니다. 그 스테이트 2 결승전에서 배회한 후 팀을 어떻게 주장을 했습니까? 이번 경기 어떻게 기대는 가지고 있습니까? 다시 한 번만 질문해 주시겠어요? 잘못 들어가지고. 아, 네. 그, 그 스틸트 결승장에서 배배한 후 팀을 어떻게 주장을 했습니까? 그 이번 경기 어떻게 기대는 가지고 있습니까? 어, 스테이지 2때 이제 끝나고 나서 저희는, 음, 좀더 이제 실수를 줄이자고 좀 많이 말했었고, 그 실수를 이제 줄이기 위해서 줄이기 위해서 이제 스크림을 통해서 지금 고쳐 나가는 중에 있습니다. 
好，这个问题问到 k e n n e t 选手，然后前段时间 B L G 一直有所起伏，加入新成员之后成功加成功进入冠军赛，队伍里现在有第一次打国际赛事的选手，嗯，然后会不会紧张呢？队伍又如何调整你的心态呢？嗯，我觉得调整应该不用做太多的调整吧，因为其实我们队员上来的心态也是比较放松的，包括。奈夫和弗勒辛，虽然他们是第一次打，但是他们其实在国内打过很多其他类型的比赛，对。然后我也给奈夫说了，我说哥这次绝对带你拿下你的第一个胜利。好的，那因为 B L G 在季后赛的过程中没有在新地图上和其他队伍进行过较量嘛，那么这次在冠军赛上会给大家展示一下新地图吗？呃，如果有机会的话，可以展示这个新地图吧。对。好的，谢谢。Uh, there is two questions. The first question is actually in previous time there is lots of ups and downs in BLG, and I just want to know, especially like there is lot there is two players like Nav and Flexing. They are the debut on the international tournament. So do you think uh, there is a little bit intense, or how do you guys manage to adjust your mentality? And Uh, his answer is, I don't think we should do many adjustments on our mentality because we are super like relaxed or something, stuff like that. And talk about nap and flexing. Actually, they used to play other type of uh, games or t other tournament in the previous time. So, and also I told nap that I will take him to uh, take his first win. And the second question is, uh, BLG haven't played a bit this new map in playoffs or stage two. So will you play it in champs? And uh, Knight's answer is, if I have the op opportunity, maybe I will. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, we'll take the next question from Sierra. Yeah, hello. Um, my question goes to Boaster. I just wanted to ask um, for comments on your upcoming collaboration with Derevacat uh, for Champions. Just how was it experience? What was like a favorite memory with preparing that song that's coming out on August 2nd? Yeah, I think uh, Derevacat's pretty good at making music, safe to say. Uh, whenever I had any like ideas or if I was to say anything, she'd quickly be able to efficiently work on it and then give me some feedback or send it back to me. Uh, I didn't actually get to spend too much time on it. We had one little Discord call for like three hours and uh, that was when I wrote the rap. Uh, but yeah, she she did really good in the song. Uh, the boys listened to it and they were like, yeah, she sounds really good. Me on the other hand, we're not really sure how good I am in it. So I'm not gonna say anything. I'll just let everyone else interpret however they want to feel about it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if I'm excited or a bit like, oh no, with that is coming out, but we'll see. It was a fun, it was a fun little project. Um, and I'm always happy to uh, do these sort of things. And yeah, I mean, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, what day is it? 2nd of August? 2nd of August. Thank you. I, I, no worries. I assume we're not getting a preview on this press conference? Uh, no, no, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten it. All right. Uh, we'll go next to Ravish. Uh, sorry. Uh, hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, so a question again to follow up with Boaster as well, too. Uh, so real quick, as always, uh, what, what dances have you prepped for your walkout so far? Are there any that we can look forward to? And just real quick on the second... I saw on I saw on Will Mender's list you put the you also put Kiss of Life on there. So what was your bias on that band? Yeah, that's it. Um yeah, so walkouts. I haven't actually prepared any walkouts yet. I, I won't lie, because every time I prepare a walkout, it's very difficult to do them when we walk out because it's like we're walking on stage. I don't know where the cameras are. So it's really difficult to know when to actually dance. So it's been quite difficult. Um, so this event, we potentially have some celebrations though. So that might be exciting that if, if they all get allowed. And um, yeah, I, I think I'll prepare, I'll save the walkouts for uh, if we make it to the, the big stadium because I think I'll know how the, the camera angles will work there and it'll be easier to pull off, I think. Um, so yeah, there's, so there's that. And then, yeah, so obviously Kiss of Life have been involved in the Champions Anthem. 
And I was like, oh, who are they? I kind of saw like some like TikToks about them, uh, but I never listened to their music. So then I started listening to their music just in case I was to meet them at this event and be like, oh, hey, yo, what's up? Like, oh, I listened to this song. I like this song, uh, which is... Uh, so yeah, so that was that was my planning for that conversation. And honestly, I don't really have a a, a stand right now because I don't actually know them. So we'll see on the day if we do end up getting to meet them. Whoever kind of well, I'm only meeting two, I guess. So either Julie or Natty is going to be the one that could be the bias. To be fair, so uh, there we go. Nice. Solid. Thanks, man. Cheers. No worries. Thank you. We'll go next to uh, Miguel Mendez from Codigo Esports. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Hello. Um, my question would be for Kesnit. Kesnit, I would like to know what aspects has worked on Crew to improve since the elimination in the Best of the Americas. Eh, nada. Creo que estamos trabajando en nada en lo mental y cómo cerrar más partidos. Prácticamente. Y eso no más porque hemos tenido poco tiempo. The question was, what aspect has Crew been working on since their elimination in VCT Americas? And Kesnit said he's been working on his mental and how to really close out games, but they haven't really had much time to work on anything else. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Alan. Okay, thank you. So this is a question for K Knight. Uh, so first of all, his his idea is pronounced as K Knight, is not Knight. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so my question is uh, for K Knight, and uh, my question is, you know, it's been a year since your last appearance in the international stage, and the last year's champion is a miracle run, and it's uh, something that will go in the books, in the history books of VCT. But uh, compared to last year, what do you think you have been uh, most growing up your takeaway from the whole year's group? You know this process. So, uh, can I? Uh, my my question is this. I'm Alan. My question is this. Is because actually, we all know, uh, is you guys have come back in the world championship. And actually, last year's championship, your performance is very, very exceptional. And actually, I believe it's going to exceed your expectations. And actually, I believe it's going to exceed your expectations. And actually, I believe it's going to exceed your expectations. And actually, I believe it's going to exceed your expectations. And actually, I believe it's going to exceed your expectations. And actually, I believe it's going to exceed your expectations. And actually, I believe it's going to Okay, so the uh, the answer from K9 is uh, actually this is not an easy year for them. So it's a very bumpy and uh, they have new coach coming in and uh, their philosophy has uh, a little bit switching up and uh, they think that uh, the most important part is their improvements in mentality and uh, uh, yes, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Tang Duong. Uh, hi, uh, this question is for Bosta. Uh, congrats on winning the stage two trophy and you guys are going to play against uh, BLG in your first match and they beat NRG twice in 2023, champs after not being expected to do so. So, uh, do you guys have any expectation for this match? Um, <clears throat> truth be told, I, I don't think I have any expectations. Uh, we're just going to prepare uh, like we have to any team uh, because anything can happen at an event. So we're, we're not going to let our guard down. And we know, I think we're just going to take it very like chill. For me, this event, I'm going to just be very chill because when I'm chill, we're actually playing quite well. So I think that's going to be my focus. And as for the team, we're just going to prepare hard and take it game by game. So yeah, we got Billy Billy first. We played them in the past. So it'd be a nice little rematch for them. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I had my life game versus them last time. And I'm not going to lie, we played deathmatch versus each other today. And I was shooting some heads. Like, uh, so maybe I'll be able to uh, shoot heads on the game day as well. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, I'm just super excited to play on the stage. And uh, Shanghai didn't go as as how I expected. And so this event, I, I know what went wrong. And I know uh, what I did, uh, what I could have done better. And this event is going to be a redemption for that, hopefully. Thank you. Uh, we'll go next to Kwong Valorant, uh, Tang Duong. Uh, hello. Uh, I have two questions for two players. 
but all is booster uh uh coming to champion with a new player hero still like experiment in international competition how do you feel about this player after vct's emea stage two uh, you can answer first and yeah. uh, we can go to player two okay um yeah so yeah we've got hero it's his first international tournament but it was his first game against BBL and he played pretty well back in the this the split. And I don't think anything's any different. The guy, he's quite stoic in his mindset. He's a, a yeah, he's just a, a kid that's enjoying the whole gaming process. So yeah, I think he's gonna do fine. Uh, I think we've been we've been doing really well. Uh, and in scrims, he's been popping off on some of the scrims, which is what we like to see. Uh, we're not expecting it every map, but when it does happen, we've got to praise it. So. Yeah, I think we're we're yeah we're having fun. I'd say. Okay, thank you. Uh, my second question for Kesnit from Crew. So, uh, what do you think about your performance in VCT America? And a uh, Jen about your team can go deeper into champion. Also, what about any changing about your team performance in this season? Thank you so much. Te quiere preguntar que, qué opinas de tu performance en BCT Américas y también entrando a Champs, cómo ha cambiado el equipo su mental o la estrategia. Eh, creo que fue un individualmente fue abajo de lo normal, de lo esperado mío, y creo que lo que hemos trabajado como equipo es lo que repetí anteriormente, creo que el mental y nada, creo que no hemos preparado súper bien estos, estos cuatro días, así que Vamos con, con ansia y, y con fe. So individually on his performance, he performed lower than he expected. And for the second part of the question, as a team, they really want to work on that mental. And especially they've had very little time. They've had to prep for four days. So they're going into it hopeful, but also anxious. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Valeria. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Seoul. My question is to DRX Mako. At the end of stage two, and especially in playoffs, you guys demonstrated an impressive play and unbelievable progress as a team. What enabled such a quick growth? And uh, do you think that you can keep the momentum and get even better throughout the champions? And additionally, do you think that your younger teammates uh, will handle the pressure of international games well? Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, sure. Uh, the question was, what enabled such a quick growth for the team throughout the playoffs? And do they um, are they able to keep the momentum for the champions? And additionally, about the younger teammates, if they can handle the pressure of international games well, in Marcus' um, opinion. Thank okay, you. Thank you. 아, 먼저 디어렉스가 엄청 빠른 성장을 보여줬는데 비결이 뭔지 그리고 이 성장세를 계속해서 챔피언스 때도 상승세로 이어갈 수 있을지 그리고 좀 경험이 많지 않은 선수들이 들어왔잖아요. 이런 선수들이 어, 부담감이라는 거를 잘 핸들할 수 있을 것 같은지에 대해서 마코 선수의 의견을 물어보고 있어요. 어, 일단은 저희가 이렇게 빠르게 발전할 수 있었던 이유는 아마 저희끼리 이제 합을 맞출 때도 그렇고 많이 신인 선수들을 가르치기도 했고 그리고 무엇보다 실수에 대해서 말도 많이 했었기 때문에 저희가 좀 빠르게 성장을 할수 있었던 것 같고 또 이번 챔피언스가 이제 애초에 국제대회가 처음인 선수가 두명 있는데 그 신인 선수들은 또 이제 제가 뭐잘 케어해가지고 같이 이끌어갈 생각이고요 음. 저희는 이제 그리고 어린 선수들이 많기 때문에 이것보다 더 잘할 수 있을 것 같아요. 퍼시픽 때보다. Well, uh, during stage two, we were, you know, open to talk about any sort of mistakes, and also we were open to having those hard talks to make sure that we fix uh, our mistakes and also clean up our game. And I think we have a good momentum going forward. Also, we have young players who can shoot. So I think we're going to perform better than we did in stage two as well in terms of the experience uh, that the younger players need because 
for some of them, this is their first international event um, ever. I'm trying to provide them with the best guidance that I can to make sure that they perform well under the pressure. Thank you. 감사합니다. Thank you. And we'll take the last question of this press conference from Brandon. Thank you very much. I'll ask this to Kesnit. Um, we've seen crew at uh, you know every iteration of champions so far, but the team hasn't made it out of the group stage since 2021. Uh, my question is what makes this team different than the, the past teams where you guys think you can make that deeper run? You know, what kind of improvements have we seen over the years? You know, we saw that LCQ run last year. You guys had that run this year at the start of ECT America stage one. Just what makes the team this year different compared to those in the past where you feel you guys can pull it off finally? Uh, Kesnit, pregunta para Kesnit. Eh, hemos visto a Crew en cada nivel de champs y también desde 2021. Quiere preguntar, ¿qué es eso de Crew que, que marca esa diferencia esta vez en, en este champs? Eh, creo que tenemos jugadores nuevos como Chai y Motita que tienen demasiada mira, que nos ayudan mucho a nuestro estilo de juego y nada, creo que cada uno confía en, en, en el otro y tenemos una muy buena química, entonces creo que ahora tenemos el potencial para pasar grupo y lograr algo más, más bueno como, se, como dijo él en el 2021. He said they can really uh, reach a new level here because they have a lot of new players, um, notably Shy and MCA, uh, who play really good lookouts and they've held their play style and you know just believing in each other, they have that chemistry and that potential to do better this time. Thank you so much. We're actually going to keep taking a few questions. Uh, I got a false cue that we should be wrapping up. Uh, we'll go next to Sky Key. Uh, 이 질문은 마코 선수한테 드리는 질문인데요. 어, 마코 선수가 IGL 한지 얼마 안 돼서 이제 좀더 마음이 편해지셨는지 보완할 부분에 대해 궁금합니다. 어, 이제 IGL을 맡은 지 거의 두 달. 돼가는 중인데 이제 사실 처음에 했을 때보다는 편한 거는 사실이고 그리고 아직까지 배워야 될 점도 많다고 생각을 하기 때문에 뭐 그렇다고 막 그렇게 큰 부담은 있지 않고요 좀 괜찮을 것 같아요 하면서 so this question was about whether Marco feels comfortable taking over that IGL role now. And Marco's answer was, it's been two months since I uh, took over the IGLing duty. And for me, I wouldn't say I'm entirely comfortable or used to the role, but I'm getting better and I'm feeling more comfortable. But there are still a lot of things to learn when it comes to, you know, uh, being a better IGL. So I am just have to keep trying to be, you know, a better leader for the team. Thank you. We'll go next to Pedro Romero. Guys, uh, nice to see you guys over in, in this press conference. We've got a question for for Boaster. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about expectations for your upcoming match against Billy Billy. I want to just kind of piggyback off that, not just focusing on this match, but just focusing on just your expectations the entire year. Of course, you know, um, you've spoken at length over – uh, your mentality and also the team's mentality um, for uh, throughout this year, you know, not making uh, Madrid, uh, playing in Shanghai, going through stage two, having Hero um, get into the team and then continuing the form through stage two and making champions. How has that kind of mentality of yourself um, changed throughout this entire year in which you now reach a point where, you know, now you're getting ready for this event and, in addition to that, how do you kind of compare this whole process to last year? Because, of course, you know, this is a different squad compared to last year's squad at this point of the year. Um, I think that, yeah, that kind of sums up with the expectations. I think expectations have been the bane of me this year, starting the year expecting this, uh, going to Shanghai expecting that. Um, and I just think... Like the game doesn't care about what I expect or what the team expects. The game only cares about if you go up on that day and you shoot heads, essentially. So I think coming into this event, I have zero expectations. I, uh, I'm, um, 
Uh, and that's what I'm kind of focusing on. I, I could come to this event and be thinking, oh, I, I want to get to here. I want to do this. I expect this. But I think it doesn't, it doesn't make a healthy boaster. It makes a boaster that is uh, stressed and whiny and aggy and expecting too much from the players. And then they end up uh, falling a bit behind as well. So uh, something that I'm going to be working on over the next two days is literally not living by that rule and whatever happens happens and yeah like screw it you know let's just go and play some games and see if we shoot heads on the day and that's all i'm gonna do and i'm just gonna prepare as hard as possible so that we have more of a chance of winning but that that's pretty much it um and then as for in comparison to this year uh, uh and like getting hero in i think that's a big thing like hero we didn't expect that he would be playing and uh and it worked out so I think that's the thing, you know, you just got to roll with what you're the hand you've been given and do your best. And everyone seems to be stepping up and I'm really liking the progress we've made and the the step, the journey that we're going to, you know. Um, yeah, I'd say that 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 would be it. in comparison to last year, we were a fresh team and we were uh, hungry this year. We were ch uh, juggling different challenges and yeah. I think it's all a big learning experience and I'm very grateful for it. I'm grateful to be in this space and playing the video game um, and doing extra stuff too. So yeah, I think this this tournament, you'll, we'll have to wait and see how far we go. Uh, but first game, Billy Billy. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Thank you. We'll take the next question from uh, Strafe Esports. Um, thank you. So. Uh... My question is actually for both Marco and Boaster. So as Marco mentioned, he's been IGL of DRX for a few months now. But on the other side, Boaster has been IGL of Fnatic for quite a while now. So I want to ask uh, the two of you, do you feel any differently about this responsibility uh, from when you first stepped up as IGL uh, compared to now? Marco 선수랑 보스터 선수에게 물어보고 싶은 질문이라고 했는데 두 선수의 IGL 경력에 있어서 차이가 많이 나잖아요. 근데 뭔가 이제 처음 IGL을 잡았을 때어 느꼈던 그런 마음가짐과 뭐 지금 조금 그래도 경력이 쌓인 이후에 어떤 생각이 드는지 어떤 마음가짐인지. 저는 IGL을 처음 맡게 됐을 때는 사실 좀 많이 막막하긴 했었어요. 도대체 어떻게 게임을 이어 나가야 되고 어떻게 팀을 막 조종해야 되고 막 그런 거를 좀 모르는 상태로 했었는데 근데 결국에는 음 주어진 상황이 있으면 그냥 적응을 하는 게 사람이잖아요. 그래 가지고 그냥 뭐 하다 보니까 또 괜찮게 되는 것 같더라고요. 그래 가지고 뭐 처음엔 힘들었지만 후반부에 가면 갈수록 할 만하다. 그리고 또 뭐랄까 팀원을 조종하는 데 능력도 생기는 것 같고 그냥 뭔가 좀 재미있게 느껴지긴 해요. 아이제 라무더스. Well, at first, uh, I had to start from the scratch. Uh, I was feeling lost. You know, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to call those shots that uh, can help my teammates and help the team? But now I'm slowly kind of getting used to it, and um, and I think I'm learning a lot, and I'm definitely feeling more comfortable with the role. And uh, it's fun um, now that I look at it. You know, you have power to control your teammates and also manipulate them. Um, and they do, as you say. So it's a fresh uh, role for me. And it's it's a fun role. And for me, I'd say just at the start, uh, if I was to compare it now, I was just enjoying the process and didn't expect to be here. Uh, now, obviously, fast forward four years later, um, yeah, there's been a lot of learning experiences to learn from. And just when I thought at the start of this year, I've been through it all, I'm ready for anything. Boom, this year happens and there was more learning experiences. So yeah, it never gets old, never gets uh, boring, that's for sure. Uh, it's always You're always tired, kind of, uh, unless you sleep and gym. Uh, that kind of helps a little bit. And yeah, uh, unfortunately for Mako, it doesn't get any better from here, mate. So like, welcome to the IGL in role. Uh, yeah, it's tough. And it is rewarding, though. I'll take that, though. Marco 선수 앞으로도 힘들 거래요. 나아지지 않는데요. All right. Uh, I think he accepted his faith. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you to you both, and all the best to all of you for your upcoming matches. Thank you. 
Thank you. We'll take the next question from Antonio Romero. Yes, thank you. Eh, mi pregunta es para Kesnit. Kesnit, eh, estuvieron muy cerca de clasificar a Master Shanghai y después las cosas se complicaron un poco y estuvieron muy cerca de no clasificar al Mundial. Ya que habían logrado ganar el partido contra 100 Thieves, ¿qué tanto eh, impactó esto en, en sus emociones, en, en la presión que quizás sentían por, por enfrentar este partido y pues ya tener un lugar en el Mundial? Eh, yo no sentía ningún tipo de presión, creo que nadie sentía ningún tipo de presión, si no lo cumplíamos eh, había que trabajar más duro, creo que si estamos acá es por el motivo de que trabajamos bien y no fue por ni un tema de suerte, creo que lo merecemos y nada, demostrar aquí y seguir con el mental positivo que hemos, que hemos tenido como equipo. So the question uh, started off, you know, you guys were so close to classifying for Shanghai and then it became a bit complicated and you guys almost didn't reach um, these internationals. How much did uh, the match against Hunter Thief affect you guys? And Kesnet responded, you know, I didn't feel any pressure. Uh, neither of the other guys felt any pressure. You know, if we didn't win it, we just had to work harder. And, you know, we got to where we are now because everybody worked really hard and it's become like this positive change. Thank you. Um, and we'll take the last question from Arnab. Hey guys, first of all, uh, I want to ask actually to all of you guys, uh, I'm interested to know what are your pickems for champions uh, in, in the end game feature, which is uh, recently introduced by Riot and what are your simple thoughts on it? Sorry, did you say the thoughts on the new map Abyss? No, 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 no. Uh, the new champs pickem uh, event, which has been introduced, and what are their pickems? Uh, I expect uh, bias from everyone, but uh, it would be great to know about their thoughts. The champs pickems. Yep. Okay. So the the, the champs pickems are essentially something where the community can vote and choose who wins against who and then if you get 100% you get a title for me I've never done a pickems in my life so like <laughs> uh, it doesn't affect me but it is quite fun for the community I can see how it can be quite exciting especially if uh, you are on route to 100% but good luck if anyone gets 100% I'll shave my head no <laughs> I won't really but uh, yeah la pregunta fue que qué, qué opinas del champs pickems eh, pregunta para todos <laughs> No sé qué opinar de eso, o sea, es, es bueno que lo hagan, no sé, es muy mala la pregunta. He says he doesn't know what to think about that. It's kind of a bad question. Is there any other maybe question you'd like to ask? Yeah, we'll, we'll take another one. Yep. Um, Strafe, uh, would you like to close us out with your question? Uh, sorry, no, my hand was actually raised by mistake. I'm okay. so sorry. Alan, we'll go to you then. Okay. So my final question to wrap up for you guys. Uh, hi, Buster. I'm Alan. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hello. So you know that in this group, like Marco and Kaznet and you, you three all experience 2021 champions. And it's, it's, it's been here all of three years. And uh, looking back to this kind of three years time, and uh, it's actually, there are a lot of longevity players like you and like all three of you. And uh, what is your at least your personal thoughts about your secrets in keeping your longevity in esports career. Yeah, honestly, I think the only reason I'm here is because I'm an IGL, let's be real. So I've uh, I've really focused on that route and it seems to be working out. Whereas when I remember Mako when he first joined, the guy was literally like a 200, I can't remember how many ADR he was, but he was like, he was popping heads at the start, uh, at the start of DRX. And so I'm not surprised that he's still here today as long as he uh, is still motivated. And yeah, I still remember Kesnit running through Haven Garage, jumping in a window and shooting me in the head. Uh, and I felt like I couldn't do anything against him on the Reina uh, at that champion. So yeah, th I think that's why I'm sat here today. It feels like just yesterday, in my opinion, like I don't know where the time has gone. Uh, but yeah, that's why these guys are still in the game is because back then they were still at the top of the game and they were like some of the classified as some of the best in their roles um so yeah I, that and yeah and i think i've answered it there we go 
Okay, thank you. Thank you and good luck to you guys. Thank you. Mako, Kesnet, Boaster, K Knight, thank you so much for taking uh, part in this press conference, and we'll be back with the final group after this. Yeah, PTSD.